uh, which for the material and the actual like custom paint and everything. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Good it's pretty good deal. Good deal. Thank you for your question. Thank you. I love that that was the first question. Yeah. <laughs> what are you wearing today? <laughs> Who are you wearing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I have a question for both of you. Yeah. What is your favorite character you've ever faced? Uh, I have a feeling you might answer the same way I will, but okay. I don't know. All right. My answer is that it's too hard to Yeah, pay it's like picking kids. Yeah, it's too it's hard. Like and I know that, you know, anytime I answer that question, people are like yep. disappointed that I'm not picking one, but. It's not the um, one that I had in my head. So, that? it's not the one that I had in my head, so. Okay. Um, actually, kind of was. Uh, it's like picking a kid. I have like a top five that are like constantly there. Uh, wait, I guess the attachment comes from. How much emotion you put into your character, I would imagine. And the attachment comes from how much time you spend in the booth with that that's character. That's true, that's true. Um, so people like Legoshi, I've spent, you know, days in the booth recording this, that character. Um, and, but then there's people like Willy Tiber in Attack on Titan, which there were some... I, I Thank you so much for the type of love, by the way. Um, he's, he's, he's like in three episodes, and I recorded him in two days. And I don't have a huge attachment to him because of the emotion, but I'm attached to him because it's a voice I never really get to use. It's a personality I never really get to play. It's it's, it's unique for me. Um, but yeah, I have a, I have a whole slew. I got like Tatsu, House Husband is, is a huge favorite of mine, uh, Lego Shi. Uh, and I guess my favorite character right now is because it was like a living dream come true for me is Aiden Caldwell in Dying Light 2. Yeah! Like, he's the main character of an action RPG. Like, I've been working this since I was like 15. Yeah, and I, I'm sorry that I gave <laughs> the most boring answer, but it's so true that it's too hard to pick. And I think part of it too is I love different things about different characters. And what's fun for me as an actor is having the variety and getting to voice characters that are super different from each other. And so then it's really hard to compare them and try to like, you know, say I like one more than the other because they're so vastly different. And so I love getting to bounce around characters that are just silly and goofy and uh, lovely and you know then go to like you know a really dark crazed villain and you know I, I love to be able to go all over the place so I have a joke in my community that I voice the same character in alternate universes across fiction because they all sound like generally the same it's just like you know it's funny it's weird how that happens yeah yeah, thank you for your question. All right, so I had uh, two quick questions for you. I'm an author myself, so I'm working on, you know, a couple of different stories, one of which I've had in my head for about 25 years. Um, and every time I picture him out, I try to, you know, picture out his voice in my head. Do you guys ever do any kind of like heavy duty research into your characters before you play them, or do you just go off of what the directors are telling you about the characters? So, um, for me, and I don't know how the process is for you because you're you're based out of LA, right? I'm in Dallas, and so. Um, in my experience working uh, for studios in Dallas, um, unfortunately, I am not given any time to be able to do that. Um, oftentimes when I go in to record for a character for the first time, I don't even know what show I'm going in to record for. I just know that they've booked me you know, on this day at this time for this many hours. And I, and I go in and I don't even know what I'm gonna be doing. And I walk in and the director's like, hey Lindsay, we're gonna be working on this show and you're playing this character. And then they give me like a five minute rundown on uh, what the show is about, um, what uh, my character is like, their personality, how old they are, if they, know any, if they do know anything about the backstory, they'll give me some of that. And then um, I just kind of have to run with it from there. Um, and cold read, I don't get the script in advance. Um, and uh, that's generally the case, yeah, for any um, dubbing work I do for anime. For other types of projects, uh, like on camera, for example, I get a lot more time with it. Um, I get the script in advance. Um, 
you know, usually anything I've done for on camera, it's not like it's based on, you know, a manga or anything like that where I can do research into it, but um, I'll delve into the script at least and, um, you know, if, you know, there's something going on with that character that I could do particular research on, then I will. But yeah, uh, I'm guessing most of you are curious about anime and the anime world and voiceover. And for that, for me, I am uh, not given the luxury of time to be able to do research. <laughs> yeah, she's right. When it comes to anime, you don't, you don't get a whole lot of time to do research. However, I reverse, I like to call what I, what I do is reverse research. I, I'm a weeb, so I watch anime and I read manga constantly. And whenever I get cast in a show, even if I don't know they're doing the show or I don't know they're dubbing the show, it comes up and it's like, oh, cool, I know that. I may not know the character, but I know I know the show, I know the plot, I know the basic gist of what's going on, I know where the character falls in like the friend group or whatever, and um, I'm kind of able to, to take an archetype and then go from there um, and just kind of build on that. Yeah. Um, for like I do I do on camera stuff, uh, but it's on camera stuff for anime. I, I I have on camera experience, so a lot of the time they're like come in and do this, uh, you know, bonus feature Blu-ray thing, or come in and do this. You know, we're doing, we're making TikToks for this Anaplex show, and we need the voice actors to come in and do TikToks. So yeah, I do, I do that kind of on-camera stuff. So it's, it's kind of similar. We get a little bit of like this is what we'll ask you. This is what we'll talk about. We get some stuff ahead of time, and for some anime, I will say for shows like that are that are higher profile, that are like they're paying a lot of money to get this done. Like eighty six got, you know, that that got a really big good treatment. I was able to get the the script like three or four days ahead of time. Hi. I was able to, yeah, never had that I, I got that in ever. attachment and I'm like, You're, it felt like I was committing a crime. I was like reading the script and I'm like, am I, am I allowed to do this? I almost like, like, didn't want to look. I, I don't know, but um, I, I do get to read a couple times and, and it's good to figure out like, okay, will there be big screams in this session? Will there be, am I going to die? Am I, am I going to kill somebody? You know, you got to prepare for that stuff. Um, but for video games, it's... No, you don't get the script beforehand at all. Um, yeah, no video games have never gotten the script in advance. I, I am lucky that I was so close to the developers of Dying Light 2 that I was able to, you know, kind of like, not necessarily horse blinders, but I was like, hey, look, I would, I, Aiden would say this, like, it's because they're Polish, right? And uh, the game had to be localized from Polish and English. So every now and again, I'd be like, a, a, a kid with an American accent wouldn't say that. Like, we don't, we don't speak like that. The syntax is wrong. We'd have to move that around. We have a localization producer that helps that, and a dialogue editor. But at the same time, those people are like 60 plus years old. And it's uh, easy to uh, lose a lot in the translation. But I'm, I'm really lucky that I got to deal with that and, and, and kind of put, point them in the right direction. But sometimes, so the answer is like, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but for voiceover, usually not. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the job, Andrew. Yeah, good you. Good question. Oh, right, my posture's terrible. Sit standing all day. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what up, Saratoga? How y'all guys doing? Hey! <laughs> you know, I have really been a good fan of anime ever since I was about five or seven. I started first watching Dragon Ball, and yeah. something tells me about you. You one of the characters off of the uh, Z Kai, are you? Yeah. It kind of look. It kind of looked like you might be Christopher Sebag for Vegeta or something. I I, would, just, I, I, I would love. I, I, I it just look it, play a character it, of that it, caliber. It just looked like it. But I, as I said, I've been a huge fan, and um, since my um, anime teacher said that this trip, this long journey that I came all the way through, really, really had got something in my heart. Why um, being around people is is always supporting, is always a dream. Um, it is is my biggest life that I, I have ever been in Saratoga. Um, but. Um, but the beauty, it's just, it, it, oh, sir, it's my second time coming out here. I, I've been participating in a unified bowling. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, uh, it, it is an honor to meet y'all voice actors. Um, uh, but I have a question. Sure. 
What what online um characters off of um Dragon Ball Z do you like normally run? Okay, uh, I my favorite Dragon Ball Z character is Frieza. Um, I well maybe not favorite. I guess Vegeta. I recently I was in a. Do you guys know the show Death Battle? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a YouTube show. Um, recently, I, I played Thor in Death Battle, and Thor fought Vegeta and kicked his butt. But I, the, the way that uh, the voice actor they got to play Vegeta, played Vegeta, was one of the best Vegetas I had heard in my life. Um, so, yeah, it was it was Lanny Fitour. And uh, I think because of that performance, his final flash, please go watch it, his final flash is so good. Um, but he's, uh, Vegeta is probably one of my favorite. Don't forget about the Gallic Gun, too. Gallic Gun, yeah, exactly. You are the special it. elite, don't forget your prime. Yes. <laughs> um, um, are you, do you also play for anime shows? Uh, like, am I, am I in anime shows? Oh, uh, like, like, um, because I'm thinking that some people from Dragon Ball Z might be here at that that they play the voice at Gigi or Boma or um. Oh, no, yeah, no, I'm not. I am, have yet to be in Dragon Ball. Oh, well, there's what, a lot more. Well, what anime shows do you play for? A lot. <laughs> um, probably the most well-known ones would be My Hero Academia, Attack on Titan, Assassination Classroom. Oh, you're dead. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I just realized it. I just like it hearing my voice. <laughs> I just put it, I just put that together. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> that makes so much sense. Uh, Don Don Ranpa. So uh, good. <laughs> uh, it's hard to know which ones people will know, you know. But uh, yeah, there's a you can you can Google my name and, and find a, a list. Isn't that weird to say? Do. It feels really weird to say. Yeah, yeah, that, just, Google. just Google it. <laughs> I'm on the IMDb. I know that. I don't know who you really are, but you just look like Christopher Sedgwick, Crystal. Is it the beard? I think yeah, it's the beard. Yeah, it is the beard, but, but I know, I know Sam Shamil very well, though. Yeah? Thank you for your question. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next victim. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. I have to make these. Well, I had a lot of questions to choose from, but all of them were basically answered by the people before me. Okay. So they pretty much answered that you answered them. They asked me for oh, me. Oh, great. Sweet. Now, I just want to say I'm happy to be here. It's nice to meet you both. Oh. My brother's a big fan of these stars, by the way. So. Thank you. Me too. I'm a big fan of these stars. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> <laughs> Excited to be voicing Garrett in Farfetch. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Warren? Garrett. Or, or, or Warren. Warren? Yeah. yeah, I'm very excited to be voicing Warren. Uh, if, if you guys don't know, I'm in a, a an animated uh, show called Farfetch, uh, which is kind of like Scooby Doo for you know 17 to 25 year olds. Um, it leans heavy into old like monster movie themes, monster of the week stuff. Uh, it is really, really cool. Really, really fun. Um, I play the Fred Jones type character, who is like the leader of the bunch. I, I don't wear an ascot. He wears like plaid, ripped jeans. He's a bassist in the band. Um, but yeah, Warren. Warren's great. He's the group dad. I, I play a lot of group dads or big brothers or you know paternal uh, that, that kind of that kind of stees. But yeah, I'm super excited. I can't wait for that to start. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to watch it too. <laughs> Thank you for your question. I wish we had two sets of stairs. So. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I know, but then they just all the way uh, No, because I didn't so mean. So the horror. I'm in pain. No. <laughs> no, I'm literally wearing diner heels. Oh, okay. Yeah. Beauty is pain. <laughs> oh, like for a reason. Um, I'm a huge fan of both of you, but um, my main question for both of you is well, two of them. Um, is one, what's your favorite character that you play as, and what's your favorite show that you voiced in? <laughs> and I'm gonna be boring yet again. No, just say a different character every time. Just say a different character every time. And, and, and inevitably each time.
time, I will be disappointed. People, <laughs> <laughs> my answer. <laughs> I, I, I love Vincent Valentine. I love playing Vincent Valentine. <laughs> I, I don't play Vincent Valentine. No, yeah, it's so hard for me to pick a favorite character or a favorite show. Um, I really have so enjoyed my time with every character that I've voiced in every show that I've been in. And um, yeah, my favorite thing is just having a really wide variety of types of characters and types of shows. I've been uh, really, really lucky that. Um, I've gotten to play around with all sorts of super different characters and, you know, gotten to be in shows that are dark and, um, you know, make you cry and shows that are just, you know, silly and goofy and ridiculous and all over the place. Um, yeah, and I love all of them for different reasons. It's so, it's so hard to choose, but yeah, like Jonah was saying, certainly uh, the shows and characters that we get to spend more time with, um, you know, that, uh, you know, maybe more prominent characters in certain shows that require more of our time, uh, we, you know, grow closer to. Um, and so, you know, those certainly come to mind. Uh, but, oh gosh, it's really hard to pick a favorite. And in times where I have given in and just, like, chosen one, I have never chosen the correct one, apparently. Oh. Uh, anytime I've tried to be like, uh, this character, not even because they are my favorite, because I really truly don't have a favorite, but because it's like the person who really wants me to pick one. And so, yeah, there's Beer Burger. And so I'm like, okay, character. I'll name one. Inevitably, every time I'll name one, and whoever asks the question goes, aww. <laughs> <laughs> I tried sad. saying I don't have a favorite, and then you insisted I here's a, one. Here's a, here's a switch up, okay, that okay. we may be able to answer. My favorite character archetype that I like to play oh, okay. is uh, I like playing the cool guy um, just because I like feeling cool and like feeling. I, I, I was a really, like, I used to get picked on when I was like a nerdy kid in high school. And uh, it's cool, like, after I graduate college to suddenly have casting directors be like, you get to play the coolest dude in the show. And everyone likes this guy. He's a fan favorite. And he's just awesome. And I'm just like, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank God. Awesome. Let's let's do this. Let's live a fantasy. Yeah, it does that's always feel good to play a character that's like universally loved, yeah. um, rather than characters that <laughs> cause you to get hate messages on the. You guys, have any of you guys seen Aquadama Drive? Yes. Woo! One of the best shows of the last couple of years, in my opinion, and I got to play. That was the first time I think I got to play like. So just his thing was that he was the cool guy. His name is Courier, and he has a bike, and he's just yes. cool. He, every every line he has is like an action movie one-liner. So I got to say so much cool crap in the coolest voice, and like this deep, gritty thing that even if I tried to do it on this microphone, I wouldn't like pick it up. It's gotta be. It's gotta be like film, uh, like a film, but. I don't know, like, let's ride, like, like crap like that, like, two out of three ain't bad, like, you know, that kind of crap. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, that's a, that's a good approach, so, like, types of characters, I still can't narrow it down to one type, <laughs> but I'll do it for you. It is really fun to play really stupid characters, like, the, that are just, like, like, not just ditzy, but just completely clueless and dumb, um, in a, you know, like, in a comedic way, that's always a lot of fun. Um, even though there's like no depth to them, it's just, it's just, it's funny. Um, uh, crazy villains are really fun too. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then characters that are just kind of like universally loved because they're cool. How would a dumb, a dumb character or villain character that you would like to play sound like? That I would like to play? Or, or you have played? Um. Examples. Okay, so like a dumb character. Give me something to say as the dumb character. Where is the dark bar? What? Where is the dark bar? What is the dark bar? It's a male. No, that's not a dark bar, actually. Um, so, um, what is an art bar? <laughs>
right, next, next victim. Oh, nice shirt. Super Crooks on Netflix. It is a show based on a Mark Miller comic, a Western Mark Miller comic. Uh, it is a it's like Ocean's Eleven with superheroes. Uh, please go watch it. It's great. It's spicy. It's sexy. It is great. But yeah, I got a second E-Haw. And my, my quest for E-Haw continues. I, I don't know, I've been trying, and I'm successful, uh, at getting to say Yeehaw in anime, just because it, I just don't find the juxtaposition so weird, because like, West, East, East, West, it's really weird just to hear Yeehaw in anime, but I got one in uh, Skate and I got one in Super Gross. We did Yeehaw? Yeehaw! Yeah! Thank you so much, Jonah. Thank you. Oh yeah, we turn it into a game, you see. We all turn it into a game. Hi! Oh, hi, thank you. I love my best friend. I have a question for Lindsay. Oh, Go for it. That's great. The last one was for Jonah, so. <laughs> hi, Lindsay. I'm a huge fan. Oh, my God. Oh, um, you're so sweet. My question for you is, can I get a line? Can you say a line from assassination classroom for me? It would make Yeah. Fun. Do you have one in mind that you'd like me to say? No, I just want to hear you say it. Okay. Okay, so there is literally just one line I remember. <laughs> that's the one that I read on Prince. <laughs> um, so that's why I remember it. Um, okay, so. Anything can be a sword if you polish it enough. <laughs> I love it. I love it. If I had the opportunity to choose a yearbook quote again, that would be it. It's a good one. It's a good, it's a good quote. It's a good one. Yay! You're welcome. <laughs> Kentucky University, which is a what people like to call a directional school because it has a direction in the, in the name of it, uh, meaning that a lot of people think that that directional school is less because it's, you know, it doesn't have, it's not like NYU or something like that. It doesn't matter. Wherever you got your piece of paper is where you got your piece of paper. It is a piece of paper saying, I'm willing to go to school for four more years. It, 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 it does mean stuff when you apply to traditional like like workforce jobs. But I know people who have been in major motion pictures that don't drop out of high school. I'm not saying you should drop out of high school. But I'm saying. Please don't drop out of high school. Please don't drop out of high school just because this guy on the panel said one guy did it once. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it doesn't matter where you go to school as long as you get your piece of paper and you, you, you get out and you're good to go and you get good grades. That's, that's all that really matters. Um, but I haven't noticed that uh, in voiceover, at least anybody looks yeah, at your degree at all. I would say in, uh, for the acting world in general, unless you're planning to do uh, professional theater, then perhaps a theater degree, people care about that. Um, but in my experience, um, you know, in the film, TV, voiceover world, nobody cares where you went to college, or possibly for if you even have a college degree. Um, the resume that we use um, uh, when we audition for acting jobs doesn't even include your call, I mean, mine doesn't include my college degree on it. Also, my college degrees are in marketing and psychology, so I extra don't think that they would care. Um, <laughs> I don't think that would influence them one way or the other. Um, and the reason I didn't study acting in college is because uh, I, I started acting professionally as a kid, so by the time I went to college, I was like, you know, I've been taking acting classes basically my whole life. I want to try studying something different, learning something else. And also that way, <laughs> you know, 
my very risk averse parents were like, it might be a good idea to have a degree in something else to fall back on if the acting thing, like if you don't keep getting acting work. <laughs> So, you know, I've always got that marketing degree if I need to get a regular 9 to 5. <laughs> um, I feel that's so hard. I, I had a 9 to 5. I worked at Staples. I worked at a deli. I worked at a grocery store. I worked at Walmart. I worked at Target. Well, I did a lot of retail. I worked at three malls. Uh, I, and those were all in the same year. It's been it's been a ride. I, I put in my, I, like I said, you got to pay your dues. You got to put in your dues. I pay my retail dues. <laughs> I'm never going back. Please. <laughs> yes, but yeah, so for, for acting jobs, um, what people care about is acting experience um, uh, and taking acting classes. Uh, so as far as college goes, you can approach that however you want without worrying how it would potentially influence an acting career. Also, my a tiny bit of advice, don't try and look, if you want to be a voice actor, don't try and look for like a voiceover department or a voice acting class or, or anything like that. If okay, you're going I've to, never taken a voice acting class in my life. All of my training is in acting for the camera. So. If you're going to a college, uh, they're going to, it's especially a traditional college, they're going to specialize in traditional theatrical acting. Um, yeah. Maybe you'll have a film class, maybe, and even then you probably won't be able to get in front of a camera very often unless it's for like a final or something like that. Um, I have found my good success in broadcasting departments for voice stuff. If you want to learn how to do voiceover, maybe take some broadcasting or like journalism electives. Um, yeah, like radio. Uh, that's very classic. You get to learn how mics work, you get to learn how interfaces work, you get to learn how to record things and edit things. And those are valuable skills as a voice actor that you won't get out of a, you know, a, a, a theater jury or something like that class. That is true, yeah, definitely. If you want to be able to go in, do your first voiceover job <clears throat> with, um, you know, feeling more comfortable in front of a microphone and whatnot. But um, I will say I've never taken a voiceover class in my life. And um, for my, you know, my first voiceover jobs, they didn't care. They just wanted somebody who was an experienced actor. Um, and, um, and I was a trained actor. And um, any director that I've worked with, I, you know, has talked about, that that's really what they care about as a trained actor. They don't care if you have specifically have training in voice acting specifically. They just want you to be able to act because at the end of the day, acting is acting regardless of you know what medium you're doing it in. Um, you know whether it's on camera, voiceover, on stage, whatever. Um, and uh, as far as the technical things that go along with voiceover, that I learned on the job. Um, and uh, most most directors are. Our understanding of that, as long as you're, you know, you have training in acting, and you know, you know how to play a character, and you know, get into uh, a scene and that kind of thing. So, yeah. Sorry, we took a really long time. But it's important. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome is amazing, by the way. I like your clothing. Did somebody leave us up here when they went to go ask for a question? I was gonna say, I was like, if it was a freebie, I will take it. But uh, there was, there was. Uh, Sign right here. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, this question is for Lindsay, actually. Yeah. So, so you've been in Diagon Rapid before, Celestia Ludenberg, which is my favorite character in Diagon Rapid One. Ah, so awesome. Yeah, was, yeah. And um, so you know that Rapid has different casts in, in the game and the anime. Have you ever worked with someone from the game cast or run into them? Um, I think that there is one actor in the game who also plays their character. Uh, Bryce yes. Okay, yeah. So I've never, it's crazy, I've never met Bryce in person. Um, uh, the only time I've spoken to him was actually over the phone because we did a phone interview together uh, for Attack on Titan. Um, he was super nice over the phone. <laughs> and I imagine he is lovely in person as well. Um, but I'm trying to think, I don't, other than him, I don't even know who's in <laughs> Um, like, you name some names, I can let you know if I've met them. But uh, fun fact, um, so you voice you voice Tana Tana in Love Live now. So the fun fact is, the game version of Celestia, who yeah. is Mary uh, Mary Harrington, also voiced them in Love Live. She, oh really? Voiced, oh yeah, no, I've never met her in person before. She actually voiced Monica in the dub. Oh, that's so funny. Right. Fun fact: Every time this happens, it's weird. It happened twice. Oh yeah, yeah. No, and 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 it is crazy that like. There are so many voice actors who I've done projects with who I've never met before. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it's, it is crazy. Because we record individually. Yeah. 
completely lucky. That was my first lead. I had worked on a few other shows at that studio, SDI, for a while. Um, I probably did two or three shows before I, I got the audition for B-Stars. Booked that. Bob Buckholz rolled a huge dice on me. He had he didn't know me from Adam, and uh, he's just like I like the way you sound. Here's here's the lead character, and um, because of that, I got to meet Ben Diskin, and I got to know Ben, and he's a really good friend of mine now. And he got me representation at his agency. He was like, look, this kid knows what he's doing. Give him an audition. And I went in and did an audition for the for CESD, and they're like, okay, yeah, you know what you're doing. Come on in. And uh, we signed contracts, and I have a year-to-year -year contract with the, with the agency. And um, yeah, it's 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 a lot of. I'm lucky because that that just kind of happened for me, and I didn't I didn't like have to push anybody. I didn't have to ask any really tough questions or anything like that. Um, but getting agency representation made it so that I could book other gigs that I wouldn't get auditions for otherwise. Yeah, it is. It's it's a lot harder to get work, paid work without agency representation. Um, and I will also say, um, uh, agencies don't expect you to come in with already having had like an impressive resume because they understand yes. that there's like awesome. almost no way to get good Especially work without being represented. What they want to see is that you have acting training. Oh yeah, um, yeah, I, I I don't know a ton of um, uh, voice actors who have worked with in anime who do audiobooks, but there are definitely some. Like, I know Terry Doty has done some audiobooks. Um, she's the only one that immediately comes to mind. I know uh, there's a lot of audiobook agencies in New York City. Yeah. Um, New York City is big on narration, spoken word, like all kinds of uh, things that aren't necessarily. I guess performative, but you know what I mean. It's 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 like yeah. it's 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 audiobooks. It's reading things. It's it's uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, the the UN style of dubbing and things like that, where it's just like you're just literally transliterating things. Um, but those are really good starts, and anything that gets you in a booth. That's true. It's practice. Yeah, I mean, um, technically, actually, my first paid acting job was in voiceover, and it technically was audiobook. Um, but there's not many ways you probably would initially think of it, but um, it was for a textbook, for uh, English textbooks for kids in Japan learning English. I did those too. Really? Yeah, those were the first things I did. We, we yeah. did except mine was teaching uh, colloquial slang. Again, doing the cool thing, right? Oh, yeah. I, I, the cool I, I got to teach uh, Japanese people how to say things like, I'm going to do that big time. Like, right? I'm going to call it big time, right? What does big time mean? Yeah. Well, you know what's so funny is I was at a convention, I don't remember where, but somewhere, and um, somebody's mom was in the audience you know, with, with uh, their kid who, who was there to see the voice actors, and um, at the end of the panel, she came up to me and she's like, was it the New Horizons textbooks? And I was like, yeah. She's like, oh my gosh, I was one of those English teachers in Japan using those textbooks, and I probably heard your voice when we were listening to the audio so work, which is just a really crazy well, coincidence. Not small but yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I saw it in Tokyo. That's what they used. That's, awesome. <laughs> That's so funny. Small world. That's hilarious. Yeah, so I remember, yeah, we, and they would do like, they would update them every few years. So like we would start when That's I was like 10, and then like a few years later we'd do it again. And you know, we'd, you know, we'd have to talk real slowly and saying things like, what do you have for lunch? I have miso soup. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting flashbacks, man. He's like, what? <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate it. We have time for about one more question. Before I'm sorry. I have to send, we took send our lines on that. Yeah, we went, we went very 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 right now so you're, you're, you're doing a you're good job good job so far um, but uh, go do stage work uh, stage work teaches you a lot of skills that you don't think you need but you do like working together as a group 
taking, take, not necessarily taking orders, but taking direction. Um, Honestly, that's probably the number one most important yeah, that's skill very to important. have is being able to take direction. And interpret direction. Yes. There, are, uh, there are directors that give you wildly different ways to there are some perform directors something. who don't want like, great communication skills. Well, I, and you're just like, I think I know what you mean, but we're just going to do three takes until I get it, and if not, give me a light read. But um, it's uh, get on stage. Um, you'll be interacting with stage managers, and the best thing about I, I, my, my time in college was valuable as, as a theater person because I got to learn all the different jobs. Because as a, when you're doing theater in college, you have to do everything. You're not just you're not just the lead every time. You have to go back and do woodworking. You have to build sets. You have to you know do front of house. You have to do dramaturgy. You have to you know, be assistant director. So you really learn a bunch of valuable skills to help in not just like. Uh, acting, but in like administrative acting, because that is a that is a skill that I didn't know I needed. Managing paperwork, getting your checks in, uh, doing your taxes as a self-employed person, um, filing for an LLC, becoming an S corp, avoiding taxes because you're an S corp. You know, American stuff. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully, like doing stage is big. Um, it just Putting yourself out there, you, you, you really just gotta. Um, the way I started voiceover was just putting myself on the internet. I just put my voice out there and saw what people's what stuck. Yeah, yeah. On, on YouTube, uh, you can put yourself out there on, on TikTok. I know a lot of people do voiceover on TikTok. Um, there's a big voiceover tag on TikTok. Uh, I was well, I started out when Tumblr was still a thing. Uh, <laughs> I remember Tumblr. Who doesn't remember Tumblr? But yeah, so just put yourself out there, man. I mean, I know these are very much like non answers, but um, I guess it just comes back to go, go, go do stage, get yourself out there, draw the boards a bit. Yeah, get practice any way you can. That's the main thing. Yeah. I've done some stage performances in the past. That's great. I do one in June. Oh, awesome. I used to, we would go on Skype. Uh, we would go on Skype <laughs> way back in the day, like I want to say seven to ten years ago. And it would be me and like 16 other people, other voice actors, on a Skype call. And at the time, they hadn't dubbed the Danganronpa game. Or, you know, we would do a live reading in its entirety of Danganronpa 2, from start to finish, or as much as we could. We would have like 16 to 20 hour Skype calls. People would like leave in the middle, and we'd bring people in. And just this, this constant play of sorts going over hours and hours of people just practicing. Somebody would come in, tap out, and play the character that I was playing. Um, now you've got Discord, you know, for that. Now you can go and jump into a Discord call or whatever, jump into a Discord server, and I'm sure uh, you get the VAC, uh, the voice acting Discord server. A buddy of mine moderates that, that Mama Um Wow, I'm like know. way out of the loop with all this. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, guys, this is just my job. <laughs> Hopefully that answers your question. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we can a round of applause for our